these Mustangs are notorious. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. For those new to the channel, don't forget to like, subscribe, and provide comments. We appreciate the feedback. Now recently, I was in San Francisco at our Mustangs and Classic Fords, and I was speaking to the owner Rick and getting his thoughts on what you should look for when buying a classic Mustang. I was able to capture our conversation on video, and I thought I'd share it with you. So let's get right into it. Cool, man. I feel yeah. good about it. It's, it's good to see somebody. rust okay. floor pans can be replaced if you have a rusty frame rail torque boxes those are things that um, you know can be replaced but it's gonna be very costly it's it's to each in each individual's financial situation is different um, you're a starter Mustang for a young kid could be something that could be a, a pile of junk and it's their learning it's their platform to learn about old cars mm -hmm. so again money does play a factor in buying your first classic it's all about the money you can spend and you can afford. But the, the, the key to buying your first classic is staying away from those rusted torque boxes and those frame rails. The well, first question I ask is the title clear. It's important. You don't want to buy a salvage vehicle unless you don't care what kind of work's been done to it. Okay. You can ascertain all the, the questions about the car through the VIN tag if the car still has it. Original paint, axle ratio, transmission, things like that. So clear title is very important. Uh, everything else you should be able to determine yourself or hire someone like myself or mm -hmm. locally where the car is to go do an inspection on it. I've had people call me from New York to go drive to uh, check out a car for sale. Yeah, smart thing to do is pre-inspection. Um, the not smart thing to do is to buy a car and then have it inspected when you get it. Not much you can do, you're stuck with it. Another important thing about these classic cars is shock towers. These Mustangs are notorious for having holes drilled into each shock tower. Most likely in the 70s when they were getting serviced at repair stations uh, to lubricate the upper control arms. Rather than put Zerk fittings in, angled fittings in, the quickest thing to do would be cut a hole, boom, grease it. Another issue is crack shock towers. Driver side shock tower is notorious for cracking. This is the, the shock tower that gets the most torque from the motor. We always call this the forward shock tower or forward motor mount, and then the reverse shock tower, reverse motor mount. So cracks around here are very common on Mustangs. Uh, that would be a 100% deal breaker as a purchase, unless you're getting the car for practically nothing. It's a rare car, K, a code GT, S code. Again, shock towers can be replaced, but I put them in the area of the quarter panels. They're expensive to replace. Okay. Welding is an option. If, the, if there's hairline cracks in these things, welding is an option. You can go from the outside here, you can go from the inside. We've done them where they're unnoticeable. Okay. We've done them where we can weld them, but you have to get to that threshold of re repair or replace and we rarely, rarely replace. That gets expensive to the point. I've yet to have a client come through my door and uh, you know, my, my clients are very realistic. They're daily driver client who says, replace my shock tower. You're talking about it could exceed the value of the car labor wise, especially if there's an engine in the car. If there's an engine in the car, that car, that engine's coming out. Yeah. Then there's labor involved in there. You're, you're, you're going many, many, many hours of labor to do a shock tower. So crack shock towers, I would say pass on that sale. Again, unless you have the experience to do it or you're getting the car for practically a song, then you can go ahead and throw the money into it. We're into the car right now. Areas, these areas here are very important to look at. Sometimes people use this as an area to jack the car up and there'll be some marks on there from it. Um, these are these areas here are notoriously dented in accidents. This car is decently straight. It's got some little imperfections on it, but overall, 
you can see maybe there was a little bit of hitting here, compromised just a bit. Now, you don't have to know much about Mustangs yourself personally to, to see if a car has been damaged. I mean, dents can't hide, so when you see something like this, they stand out to you, and you don't even have to be an expert in the cars. This car, relatively straight. Um, we had no issues lining things up. This is our five-speed conversion. It's almost there. We can show you the frame rails. These are good frame rails. This is what you want. These are the areas here that you, this is what you want. This is beautiful. This is a nice rust-free convertible. Surface rust, no big deal. This is just very common on old cars, but torque boxes right over here. Solid, solid torque boxes, really good. And that's a good floor pans. Convertibles, because they don't have a roof, they need more stabilizing on the underneath of the car. So they'll have a plate here, different floor. Floor's a little different. Together. For all you people out there, just know that a, a coupe console and a convertible console are different. They do not interchange. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because the contour of the floor is different. So that's what's going on underneath this car, but uh, the front of the car is always important. This area, the wells, like I said, a lot of people use this area to jack up the car. It's like they did it here. Is this a new engine in the car? It's a brand new motor, okay. it's a 302, right a T5. Uh, eh, this was a six cylinder car. It started life out as a six, and now it's a V8 five speed with a 355 track lock diff. When you're dealing with a six cylinder, it's been converted to a V8, you also want to make sure it's been done right. So, um, if you know it used to be a six and it's done right, shouldn't have the same value as a V8 stock, a V8 factory car, but uh, you gotta have that V8 differential and a V8 brakes and suspension. But I've seen six cylinder differentials and six cylinder drum brakes on it with a V8 inside of it. I actually got a guy right now who I've been working with. He's getting a car out of South Dakota. He sent me the code on it and I said, do you know that this car used to be a six? No, I did not. Did the owner tell you it used to be a six? No, he did not. So we had to make sure that it was done right before he uh, obviously got the price down a little bit because you're not gonna pay V8 money for a non-VA car. It's got manual discs and manual steering, which we're gonna take care of that here, but uh, he, he got it, but he was able to negotiate the price down a few thousand dollars. Morally, as a seller, well, you gotta know what engine came in your classic car. Oh, it's just me, yeah. I'm saying that. You should know this classic you own that you spent you know, five figures on, you should know what engine came original in it. Yeah. I'm just saying, that's just me. Yeah, I agree with you. I yeah, that's it. That, at the least of your knowledge, you know, you, you could be 